Calculating a stock's intrinsic value is one of the most important skills for any investor. It lies at the heart of value investing, popularized by the likes of Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett. In this video, I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process to value a stock using the discounted cash flow method. By the end of this video, you'll be able to value nearly any company in the world and confidently claim whether it is under or overvalued. So let's get into it. When we invest in stocks, most of the time we do so because we expect the price to go up. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Stocks can often be overpriced and buying them would result in losses rather than gains. That's where calculating intrinsic value comes into play. Intrinsic value can be thought of as the true value of a stock without the sentiment and hype of the market. As an investor, when we invest in a company, we need to focus on how much cash it generates both today and in the future. This is how we make a return. If a company is expected to generate a higher amount of cash in the future, we'll place a higher value on the stock. If it's expected to generate less cash for us, then perhaps we aren't going to value it so kindly. The most common way to calculate a stock's intrinsic value, and the one we'll be using today, is the discounted cash flow method. This will tell us what we should pay today to ensure we achieve high returns tomorrow. Today we'll take a look at Meta to determine what it's worth. Here is a quick rundown on the four steps we'll cover to calculate Meta's intrinsic value. The first step is to forecast the company's future cash flows. This can be challenging, but we'll need to rely on our research to accurately predict how this will play out. Next, we need to determine our discount rate. This is different for every investor, so we'll step through the process of finding the right discount rate for us. Once we have our forecasted cash flows and our discount rate, we can then use the discounted cash flow formula to calculate the present value of each cash flow. This involves discounting the future cash flows to their present value and taking into account the time value of money. Finally, we can calculate the intrinsic value by adding up all of the discounted cash flows and subtracting out any outstanding debt or liabilities. This will give us an estimated intrinsic value for the stock which we can then compare to the current market price. So let's get into the spreadsheet. The first piece of information we'll require is something called the free cash flow. This is made up of two parts, both of which can be found in Meta's statement of cash flows, which is towards the back of their annual report. The first part is a simple measure of the cash that Meta receives each year in its normal course of business. In the statement of cash flows, this is something along the lines of net cash provided by operating activities. Here, we can see Meta made $71.1 billion from their normal business activities. Not bad. The second portion of the calculation is finding the maintenance capital expenditures. Most companies don't disclose this, so we settle for the total capital expenditure figures. Here are Meta's accounts, it's called purchases of property and equipment. As you can see here, Meta spent $27.2 billion of cash on new offices, equipment, servers, and maybe even land in the metaverse. We now subtract the cash outflow into buildings and equipment from the cash inflow from operations. This leaves us with Meta's latest free cash flow of $43.8 billion. This will come in handy later. Now we need to find a rate that represents how fast we think Meta can increase this free cash flow by each year. This is where stock valuation turns from being a science into an art as every investor will have a different perception on how fast the company can grow. To make a best guess, I usually go to gurufocus.com. They have a great tool which shows you how well Meta has performed over the past three, five, and 10 years. In particular, I'm interested in the earnings per share, revenue, EBITDA, and free cash flow growth over the past three years. When looking at a growth business, I like looking at the shorter periods as the company's recent growth is more often than not lower in the early days. This gives a more conservative figure. So as we can see, earnings per share has grown 13.9%, revenue by 19.9%, EBITDA by 17.9% and free cash flow by 26.9%. We can then use these as a basis for our prediction of Meta's growth rate. To be on the conservative end of the scale, I'm going to take a rate of 15%. My logic is that companies tend to slow down over time, especially when they become as large as Meta, and a figure of 15% is a very conservative one, sitting below three of the four factors. So I am confident in this figure. Feel free in your own analysis to come to your own conclusions. At the end of the day, intrinsic value is really a guess of what we think it's worth. So there's no right and wrong approach to this. So now we can start building out our future cash flows the first step of determining Meta's intrinsic value. We start out in year zero and work our way out to year 10. We then put our free cash flow figure under year zero. From year one onwards, we can apply our growth rate. We simply take the cell under year one. We then take the cell immediately to the left of us 
then multiply by one plus the growth assumption rate. In this case, we used 15%. We need to lock that cell. So when we drag the formula across, it won't move from the 15%. Then we drag that formula right to the end of the 10 years. What we are saying here is that in 10 years time, we expect Meta to be making $177 billion in free cash flow for that year. Now we must calculate our terminal value. This is the value we expect Meta to be worth at the end of the 10th year. In other words, we can sell our investment at that time. There is a few ways we can calculate this terminal value. The one we'll be using and the simplest is the multiples method. We simply multiply the free cash flow in the 10th year by a multiple, giving us the value of the company at that point in time. Macro Trends is a great resource here as we can see how much this has changed over time for Meta. At the moment, Meta trades at a multiple of 28 times the free cash flow generated. This has been falling over the past decade from a high of about 80 to a low of 12. We can use a very conservative figure of 20 times to illustrate this in our projection. This gives Meta a valuation of $3.5 trillion in 10 years time, which isn't completely unrealistic if we consider that Microsoft and Apple already trade over the $3 trillion mark. So that is our forecasted free cash flows. The next thing we need to do is discount our forecasted cash flows to the present value. First, we need to work out what our discount rate is. This is the rate we expect to earn from this investment, and most investors use their opportunity cost. A risk-free rate of government bonds is used by some investors, while others use the average return of the S&P 500 index. Personally, I like the latter approach, as when I pick individual stocks, it's because I expect its returns to beat the broader market. Otherwise, I would just invest in the index. Now since the S&P 500 index was created in 1957, it has averaged a return of 10.26%. Over the past decade, however, it has averaged a return of over 12%. So let's be conservative and use that. Now let's discount these cash flows back to the present value. As a shortcut, let's use the NPV formula. Simply type equals and then the letters NPV, open bracket, select the 12% discount rate and then select all the cash flows from year one through to year 10. This gives you a value of just over $500 million. Now let's discount the terminal value. Simply take the $3.5 trillion value, divide this by one plus the discount rate and then use a factor of 10, showing we're discounting this value by 10 years. That gives us a value of about $1.1 trillion. If we add up both of these present values, the first being the cash flows, the second being the terminal value, we're left with about $1.65 trillion. The next step is something I like to do, so it's very much optional, and that is to subtract off a company's net debt. So far, we've only looked at how cash generative a company is based on its operations. Unfortunately, some companies deplete their cash on financing and investing activities, which can build their debt profile to unmanageable levels. To handle this, we need to add cash and subtract all liabilities from our intrinsic value calculation. If we look at Meta's balance sheet, you can see they have $41.8 billion in cash and a further $23.5 billion in liquid marketable securities. Adding these together, we get $65 billion, which is about $11 billion less than Meta's total debt. So we must subtract this net amount from our cash flow's present value. This takes us to $1.64 trillion, our best estimation of Meta's intrinsic value today. We can also present this value on a per share basis if we divide this number by the total number of shares outstanding. According to Meta's annual report, there are just over $2.5 billion shares on the market. Running the numbers, we get to an intrinsic value of $640.28 per share. Many investors at this point, just to be extra sure, would subtract the margin of safety of between 30 and 50%. We've made many assumptions throughout this calculation and this margin of safety assumes we've overstated many of these to the upside. It also offers us as investors an extra bit of wiggle room for the price to appreciate over and above our expected return we used as a discount rate. Let's use a simple measure of 30% just to be safe. We're now left with a revised intrinsic value of $1.15 trillion, or $448.20 per share. If we look at the current stock price of Meta, it is trading at $496. Using the assumptions we've made, Meta is currently 10.7% overvalued, so the price it is trading at is a little bit higher than what we'd be comfortable with. We've assumed a free cash flow growth rate of 15% exit multiple of 20 times, and a discount rate of 12%. We further applied a margin of safety of 30%, assuming our assumptions are 30% higher than what will actually eventuate. Feel free at this point to adjust your assumptions as required. For example, if we assume Meta grows by 17% on average, instead of 15%, 
All of a sudden, our intrinsic value is higher than Meta's current stock price, indicating it might be undervalued by the market. I hope this calculation helps you on your stock valuation journey. It certainly helped on mine when looking for stocks trading below my interpretation of their fair value. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.